Hey there everyone, Art Burns here. Hope you're all having a great day today. So we've been talking a lot about how, you know, these little things that we experience every day kind of lead up to the stress response that we, we have. We, you know, a lot of times we, we feel the stress happening in our bodies. We, we tend to think that it's just that one thing that triggered us, right? It's that traffic jam or it's the email that we got or it's the, the, the big, big news that we received or what have you, right? But really, as we've been talking about here the last couple of days in these videos and podcasts, a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, it's actually a building up that kind of primes us for that one big wallop of a, you know, of a stressor, right? And these little things that build up are the ones that we hardly even notice all day long, right? It's the little, you know, it's the coffee that wasn't quite right. It's the, it's the, uh, you know, little delay that we had with something or the little inconvenience that we had here or there. And, and these things kind of add up and build up to the point where it becomes, you know, we get to the point where we're, you know, each one of these little things happening, you know, adds a little bit of tension to us, a little bit of stress, a little bit of, of, of tightness, right? And then, and then all of a sudden when we hear a big stressor, right? When something a little bit bigger happens, and again, not usually something that's necessarily earth shattering, right? But a traffic jam or a, uh, uh, something not going well in a meeting or, or a phone call that, that, you know, we have to deal with or something like that. And then all of a sudden, boom, that's where we just you know, really get into the full stress response, right? And again, it's those little things that are adding up to that, right? And one of those little things that adds up to, to the big stress response, right, is the way that we interact with people. Right? And in our lives, you know, as human beings, we're very communal people, right? We're very socially oriented people. And, and you know, whether it's in our job or in our, uh, you know, leisure time or as parents or as, you know, just any function in the world, right? You're, you're constantly dealing with other people, right? It's just something that's part of life as human beings, right? And so each one of those little interactions poses the opportunity, again, to either, you know, increase some stress or decrease some stress, right? Move you closer to that point of, of tension where, where that big stressor comes in and, and wallops you and gets you into that, that hyper reactivity, that, that hyper arousal in your body, right? Or there's, there's opportunities with each interaction that we have to, to stay neutral or to even lower the level of stress that we have in our bodies, right? And, and this is very, very common. You know, it's not something that is, is, you know, rare at all, okay? In fact, it happens all the time you know, that each interaction we have. And, and, and the way that, you know, so, so let's talk about how, how personal interactions can create the stress, right? Can move us closer to that stress. And then we'll talk about how personal relations, interactions can move us away from the stress. And then we're gonna talk about how we can actually take control of this, what we can do to actually change it, okay? So, so the, the, you know, so many times, right, when, we, when we're dealing with people, right, whether it's, it's somebody who we're, we're personally involved with, you know, or it's uh, somebody, you know, like a friend or a relative or a loved one, right, or a colleague or a coworker, right, or it's even an anonymous person, right, somebody who, like a barista at, at Starbucks, you know, who, who miss, you know, who, who made a mistake on our drink, right but we don't realize until we get to the office right we have a tendency to say oh that darn barista you know that that person you know really screwed me up because I needed this latte you know because now I got three three meetings in a row and I can't go back and now my day feels like it's ruined because my latte's wrong you know that that's the way that we kind of uh, you know process things and there's nothing wrong with that I mean you you ordered the latte the way that you wanted it and and it wasn't made the way you wanted you paid for what you you ordered but yet that's not what you got so it's, it's justifiable to be kind of you know to, to not be you know thrilled about that right but the question is right how much of it is how how worth it is it for that experience to ruin the rest of your day right and again it's oftentimes, you know, in this particular uh, circumstance, it's oftentimes that we're not necessarily just talking about the coffee, right? We're talking about actually the person who made the coffee, right? And this is something that really has a tendency to stick with us 
you know, for, for a while, right? Whether it's a couple of hours, it's a couple of days, it's weeks, it's months, even our whole lives, you know? That we have this tendency to think like, you know, like this person did this thing to me that, that was so unpleasant and so kind of hurtful to me that I just can't forgive it, right? And you get this sense like I just, you know, like, like, ooh, that person, right? And now this can be, you know, again, it can be something as anonymous as somebody, you know, in a, in a coffee shop or a, or a supermarket or or something like that something somebody who does something that that kind of um, you know anonymously does something that that, that bothers us right but it, it's even more often it's the people that we you know that we're exposed to all the time right so, so we all have that person in the office right who you know who we don't get along with right there's that person who just bothers us the way they do things right maybe they're a little bit too uh, nitpicky uh, with with regulations and, and procedures and and maybe they cause us inconvenience you know through their rigidity um, or maybe there's somebody who's just you know sloppy right <laughs> like somebody you have to sit next to and their desk is always a mess and they always have you know food all over the place or something like that right or maybe there's the person in the office who's just very gossipy and you're just kind of like oh my gosh I wish this person would stop talking to me because I want to get my work done and I'm not interested in the gossip that they're talking about you know whatever that case is right there's 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 probably someone in your life who you're exposed to that we kind of don't have a choice not to be exposed to them right and that's the thing right like a lot of times we can't choose exactly who we have to deal with and who we don't have to deal with right like we don't get that that choice necessarily right and and this is especially true in the workplace right but it's also true like there's days let's be honest as parents right there's days that you know our children are not our favorite people in the world right and but you can't just you know what are you going to do right like they're your children right same thing with the rest of your family right like there's not much choice that we have in it right and so the question then becomes you know how do we how do we move past because the problem is that those people right it's the it's and again like I started talking about in this the beginning of this uh, this video and this podcast is that those people, right, the person who's the gossiper at work or the messy person who sits next to us or the person who, you know, always has, you know, really very strong aromatic food that they're cooking in the microwave. You all know what I'm talking about, right? There's that one person, right? Or, again, if it's just some sort of anonymous person that you don't know but you deal with who, like at a barista or a, or a, 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 a cashier at a supermarket or something like that, right, that... that when we experience these people, right, who, who offend us on some level, right, or, or just irk us in some level, right, what happens is every time we experience them, they, they kind of move us again closer to that stress response, right? Like the person who's the mess in the office, you've been dealing with them for, for a long time and you don't really, you know, it doesn't necessarily bother you in the moment, right? But the problem is that as you're exposed to this, slowly but surely and very insidiously without you noticing it right it's building up that pressure right and so and so so there's two ways in which this manifests right number one it's just the direct exposure that you have right and that you know that when you get up from your desk you know you don't even realize how much this person next to you has bothered you right but then when you go into a meeting and you snap at someone right like you didn't snap just at the person in the meeting who you know whatever happened to cause you to to you know to abruptly snap at somebody or or fire off an email that wasn't really a well thought out you know it's not necessarily that interaction but it also includes this person who sat next to you who was a mess and who kind of bothered you more than you realized they bothered you right and so and so that's one way in which these people affect us right or the people around us can have this effect on us right and and to be sure you might be having that effect on someone else right and that's another thing that we should really be aware of right is that is that everybody has these things right and so and that's we're going to get into what that means in just a minute. But, but the second way in which people can have this impact on us, or we might be having this impact on, on others, right, is the way that we think about the people outside of the experience, right? So, for instance, you know, if there's that one person right at work who who is you know maybe it's a messy person maybe it's a gossiper maybe it's just somebody who never does their job right and you always have to you know deal with that and that kind of thing but whatever that is right 
that one person, right? Like, like when you're heading into work, right? We have this tendency that like when we're getting ready to go into work, we think like, oh gosh, that person's going to be in today and I don't want to deal with them. And oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard because they never stop talking and their, their breath smells or something like that, right? And we start to think about it, right? We start to think in anticipation about it. And then even afterwards, we're thinking about it, right? Like, so, so heading into the day, we're thinking, oh gosh, it's going to be so hard, so hard, so hard. Tension, 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 right? That's what I mean. Like, it's building. Every time that person comes through your mind, it's building a little bit of tension, right? And that's what me, and then, and then so when you finally get there, the person might have, you know, cleaned up. They might have, you know, they're not doing what they normally do, but yet you're expecting it, right? Because you, you prepared yourself so much for it that the first thing out of their mouth, it's like, oh, I, dude, I knew it. You know, you're bothering me again, right? But we're not even really seeing it for what it really is, right? Because we're so convinced that this is how it's going to be, right? And then, and that's, that's the sort of, uh, you know, uh, anticipatory way in which this happens. But it also happens in a rumination kind of way, right? Like after the day is done, right? When we're going home and we're thinking about, oh gosh, it was so hard to deal with this person today. They were they were on, you know, in rare form. They were doing their thing, right? And again, it, whatever it is that's, that's, that's bugging you about any particular person, that's irrelevant, right? Because there's always something, right? There's always either that person, like I said, the, the person who, you know, is really, uh, you know, a stickler for the, the, the grammar on an email or something like that, you know, but just, just the people that, that kind of make you, you know, they kind of irk you, right? And, and, and we, and the first thing to do is to admit that this is happening, right? And to, and to acknowledge the fact that, yeah, there's something about this person that does this to me, makes me feel this way, right? But now let's talk about how we can we can rise above this and how we can negate and neutralize this effect that these people have on our stress, right? Because again, what it is, is it's not like we're sitting there saying, okay, I'm thinking about this person who, who always does this to me, right? Whether it's a gossip or it's a messy person or it's somebody who's just, you know, kind of noodling you for for you know, purchase orders or what have you, whatever it is that, at your job, right? That, 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 that one person who gets that, like sort of gets under your skin a little bit, right? It's not like we're sitting there saying, hmm, this person does this to me and, and I don't know why, but I do know that it's priming me for stress, right? We don't think of it in those terms, right? What, instead, what we do is we, we just kind of treat it as just a normal thing. Right, and, and, we, and in treating it as just a normal thing, we become very susceptible to it, right? And we become, uh, you know, sort of, we open ourselves up to the stress that is building, that we don't realize is building, okay? So now I'm gonna give you a couple of ways in which you can approach people differently so that they don't do this to you, right? Or so that you don't react to them in this way, right? Because that's, the, the, that's really the essence is that, they're not really doing something to you, right? Like that person who is a gossip, right? They're not gossiping because they know it bothers you, right? Or the person with the messy desk, they're not keeping their messy their desk messy because they know it bothers you. The person with the bad breath who you have to talk to every day, they're, they're not letting their breath go bad just because it bothers you right? Same thing with the barista, right? The barista did not screw up your latte because she or he wanted you to have a bad day, right? And that's the thing. And this is the way that we normally function, right? We function inside this, what you might call a me-centered universe, right? And so when, when things happen, we always think that they're happening to us, right? That, that, you know, again, the person who screwed up our latte did something to us, but she really or he really did not, right? In fact, what they did was they just made a mistake, right? And, and it's, it's only because the mistake involved us and, and it, it has this sort of end result of something that Im impacts us in some way that we tend to think like, this is something they did to me, right? That, that me-centered universe, it's all about me, right? And so, so one way that we can kind of rise above this and, and sort of, you know, detach ourselves from this feeling that, that 
that somebody is always doing something to, you know, that whatever happens is happening to me, you know, in terms of other people, right? One really effective way to, to get around that, right, is to remember and to recognize and remind ourselves that people are doing things for one reason and one reason only. And this is true of 99.999% of the population, right? That people are not doing things just because they're going to bother us, right? And I often use the example of somebody cutting you off on the road, right? Something that comes up with my clients all the time, right? As I'm explaining this concept to them, right? So you're driving down the road and, and everything, you know, they're in a little bit of traffic, whatever. Everybody wants to go home, whatever. And all of a sudden this car, you know, cuts right in front of you, right? Just to get a little bit, you know, you know, a little bit ahead of you, right? And then maybe he cuts in, or he or she cuts in front of another car and then another one, another one. And you're watching this and you're thinking, gosh, how could that person do this? You know, how could they do that to me? Right? How dare they cut me off the way they just did? Right? And, and, and you get this sense that like out of all these cars out here, hundreds of cars out here, this person came to me and did this to me. And gosh darn it, I resent them for it. Right? In a moment like that, it's really beneficial to recognize that in all likelihood, and I'm talking profound, you know, profound likelihood that that person did not single you out, right? They did not say, huh, that person with that license plate number and driving that, you know, blue car, I'm going to go and, and, and mess with that person now because just because I think it might hurt them and I want to hurt somebody, right? The overwhelming majority of the time, right? The, the, the actions that we take, anyone, ourselves or anyone else around us, we're taking action that we feel is going to reduce our suffering or make us happy, which is essentially moving us away from suffering, right? But that's really the essence of, what, of, of everyone's motivation, right? And, and so when we can reframe our perception of what other people are doing. And we can reframe it into that kind of context, right? Into, into understanding that, that, you know, that, that the motivation is not against me, but it's for them, right? They are doing something that they feel they need to do for their own happiness. When we can do that, it's a tremendous weight lifted off of our chest and our shoulders, right? Because now it doesn't feel like somebody that we're being attacked, but we feel like this is just somebody who did something and, you know, right or wrong, they did it because they thought they had to do it. And now we don't have to identify with that that action that this person is, has taken, right? We don't have to identify with the insult that has come from that or the, the, the whatever offense we're taking from it. So getting back to the, the scenario with the car, right? You're driving along and this person cuts you off. The first thing we think of is, is how could that son of a gun do this to me, right? I'm here and I have just as much right to drive here as that person does, but they just cut me off. How dare they, right? But really, it's far more likely, if we think for a moment, that the person had to go to the bathroom. Or maybe they're, you know, they have, uh, their, their children are, are, you know, waiting alone and, and stuck outside their house, right? Or maybe somebody got hurt and is in the hospital and this person needs to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Maybe they're really late for a very important meeting. And, and they're feeling that if they don't get there very quickly, something really bad is gonna happen to them, right? Now this doesn't justify what somebody does, right? It doesn't justify the danger of cutting me off. It doesn't make it okay. It's not like I need to go find that person and say, hey, you know what? It's okay that you cut me off and I don't mind, you know, you're still a great person or anything. It's not about that, but what it is, it's about us, right? It's about, it's about changing the way that we perceive someone else's action so that we can you know be okay with it right we can we don't have to have it you know increase that stress in our bodies right because that's the key 
right? Is that when we feel that that anger and that resentment from someone, that's cortisol, that's the stress hormone, right? That's the same fight or flight, you know, um, uh, response as anything else that we find in our, you know, that we find in a stress response, right? And so, so what happens is, again, you know, when something like that happens, we have this tendency to then think about it like, you know, we get home and we tell our spouse, you know what happened to me on the way home today? You would not believe this person cut me off and blah, 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 right? Now, again, even just telling that story again, you're injecting more of that stress hormone into your body, right? And you're, you're moving yourself closer and closer. And really what you're doing is you're practicing stress at that point, right? You're moving yourself closer and closer and making stress a more of an automatic reaction. So then later on, when one of your children does something or, or your, your spouse says something or you get an email or, or, so, or watch something on the news, now all of a sudden, boom, now you're in full stress response, right? You're, you're feeling like your blood's boiling, your, your heart's racing, your, your blood pressure's high, you're, you're you know, breathing heavy, your, your, mind is, your brain is not working properly, all of your systems are thrown off. And it really is something that builds up to that point, you know, and like we said in the last couple of days, it's, it's, it's little experiences throughout the day, but it's also the people that we're experiencing throughout the day. So again, the best way to get past this and the best way to, to kind of, um, you know, not allow it to, to affect us in that way is to realize that this is not us, right? It's not something that somebody did to us. We just happen to have this, um, you know, it, it happens to affect us on some level, but it's not that somebody came and attacked us, right? And if you're having trouble, you know, because it, sometimes it's hard to, to kind of, you know, remember that right and sometimes it's hard to recognize that right and so so if you're having a hard time recognizing that right and, and sometimes we feel that you know um you know there's certain people in our lives that are just they're mean right they're just doing things that are just mean to us and and we can't conceptualize the fact that they're just doing it for their own benefit it just feels too much like they're attacking us right so in those cases where you have that person in your life Right? And that's the way you feel about this person. I'm going to invite you to look at that person in a very specific way. And I want you, you can choose one of the two, right? Or you can do both. But either look at that person as a very small child, right? I'm talking about two years old, right? Or, or even an infant, right? Even a nine-month-old infant, right? Like picture that person. Every single person, even the most heinous, you know, serial killers in the, in the history of mankind, right? They started out as babies. And when they were babies, they were not serial killers, right? They were not, you know, they weren't even narcissists. They weren't anything, right? They were just a little baby, right? And it is the conditioning throughout their lives that has created the person that we see today, right? And now this could apply to certain politicians in the world. This could apply to, you know, to people in the office who just seem to go out of their way to just be, you know, just nasty and mean. Um, it could apply to somebody cutting us off on the road. It could apply to anyone, right? And when we feel that sense of like, how could this person be so cruel? Picture them as a baby. Right, and if that's not ringing with you, and you'd prefer it, you could also picture them on their deathbed. Right, when we're old and we're dying, right? There is no more like picture somebody in that position. Right? Do you think that person would really be mean in that moment? Right? Of course not. That person is going to be afraid. They're going to be humble. They're going to be, you know, this is their last chance, right? And so picturing somebody either as a very small baby or as someone on their deathbed, it allows us to see the inner nobility that every person has inside of them, right? And again, it allows us to understand that, that it's the, the conditioning of life that has created this person that we see as so harmful to us, right? And where does that conditioning come from? Or what, what is that conditioning all about? Well, most of the time, it includes a great amount of fear, right? And, and a great amount of suffering, 
right? So, so people who, you know, they say that people who become, you know, abusers, right, are people who were abused as children. Right, and so this doesn't condone the abuse that the person does, and it doesn't mean that they shouldn't, you know, that that there shouldn't be some sort of um, justice involved, right? But it does mean that we don't have to see this person as, you know, sort of intrinsically evil or cruel or what have you, because when we see somebody in that way, that's when we start getting angry at them. Right? But if instead we can see someone who has been beaten up by life in such a way that now they're acting in this way, well, that makes it much easier for us to, to feel a level of compassion for this person rather than a feeling of animosity and, and resentment for them. And so I invite you to, to, to be aware of this, okay? Now, there's another really great practice that you can do to help with this, okay? Aside from just seeing people in this sort of, as a, as a baby or as, a, as someone very old and ill, you know, you can also do a very intentional practice every day, okay? And what, this practice is really, really easy. It's just a matter of picking out three different people in your life, right? You pick out one person who is very easy for you to, to, uh, to wish love and compassion for, right? So one of your children, your spouse, your parents, your siblings, you know, very close friend, a family pet, a deity, right? Somebody who's just like, I think of that, uh, this, this person or this entity and I just, it's nothing but love, right? And picture that person in your mind and say a few phrases. And if you'd like a couple of phrases, I can give them to you. I have a, a document that's ready to go. So all you have to do is send me a message and let me know that you want this and I will send it right over to you. Um, but, you know, just repeat a few phrases saying like, may you be well, you know, may you be free from suffering. May you be free from fear. May you feel loved. May you be happy, right? Now, picture someone who's neutral in your life, right? Someone who neither here nor there, right? It's not somebody very positive. It's not somebody very negative. You know, it's a, it's a, uh, a cashier at a grocery store. It's a, a barista. It's a bartender. It's a waitress or a waiter. It's a, a, a taxi driver or a bus driver. Somebody who works in the office you never get to talk to. A neighbor who lives down the street who you've not really met yet, you know? And, and just picture that person and say the same phrases to them. Right? May you be well, may you be free from suffering, may you be free from fear, may you be forgiven for your mistakes and misdeeds, may you feel loved, may you be happy. Now, this is the hard one, but this is the one that really is very effective. Pick that person who, who gives you a problem. Right? Pick that person who, who, who is really always you know, grinding your gears right? and wish the same for them. Right, And the more you can do this, the more you're going to develop this sort of mental habit of seeing people as worthy of compassion because everybody is, right? Because again, even the people in life who do the things that we see as really heinous, right? Like the really bad stuff, they're doing it because they are suffering. It's all the time, folks. Aside from that 0.001% of the population who are true sociopaths, you know, and, and really just, you know, plum evil, like that's just how their, their brains are, you know, but aside from that, and even them, there's been something that made that happen, right? And, and generally speaking, even those people are worthy of some compassion to us, right? Because again, the true sociopaths, they don't know that they're sociopaths. They don't know what they're doing. Right? So even the people who do the heinous stuff are worthy of our compassion. And the more we can give that compassion to them, the, that's one less source of stress. Right? So if you can do that and you can be present with each moment and have some acceptance and some <laughs> compassion in each moment in which you are living, <coughs> pardon me, now there's no source of stress. <coughs> pardon me. And now you can, now it's only those times that are the big deals that are ever going to get you into that point of stress. And then even during those times, you're going to be able to come down much, much faster. <clears throat> Pardon me again. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or you'd like to know more, you'd like those phrases that I can send you, uh, you'd like to talk more about this practice, please get in touch with me. 
okay? Please do. Um, I've announced a couple of times here now that I, I have a Patreon page. If you if you are moved to uh, to support me in this work that I'm doing, these free videos that I'm putting out here, I'm not doing like a paywall. It's not like some people get uh, more you know content than others. Um, but if it's there for you, I'm gonna put a uh, a, a link in the comments. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, otherwise, I wish you well. And uh, I hope that uh, you have a great day today. I hope you have a great day tomorrow. I hope you're able to meet each day and each moment with some presence, with some acceptance, and with some compassion. And without any stress. All right, everybody. Have a great day. I wish you well, and I'll talk to you soon.